Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to do a collaboration with Rhett Dashwood. He is actually the creator of the Into the Cryptoverse logo, and he also has his own YouTube channel. The content of our collaboration today are NFTs or non-fungible tokens. Rhett, it's, um, it's an honor to have you on, on the show. Oh, pleasure. Glad so, to be here. So we've talked some on, on the channel a little bit about NFTs, uh, but I thought it would be useful to the audience to have someone who's, who's really involved in this community and can help, help us all understand what they are, why they're valuable, uh, and, and where we think NFTs are going as the, as the crypto market cycle continues on. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I've been doing a fair bit of content on uh, NFTs and crypto art lately. So I've, I've got some, um, I'll bring up a video uh, just so we've got a graphic uh, around what I'm going to talk about. But just NFTs in general, I'm just going to um, give it like a high level basic term of uh, what it is and what it stands for. So it's um, a non-fungible token is what NFT stands for. Um, so I've got this grid here and I split it up. So fungible, your audience might already be aware, but it, it's something that's able to be exchanged or substituted and hold the same value. So it's, it's interchangeable, like the dollar I've got up here, casino chips, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, frequent flyer, loyalty points. Um, and so obviously non-fungible uh, means it's an asset that, that can't be substituted. It's something that's a bit more, has unique attributes um, is something different but in the same asset class. So like a painting or a theatre ticket, a house, a video game skin, um, a trademark or in 2017 some people might be familiar with CryptoKitties which was probably one of the first real use cases um, to take off on the Ethereum blockchain in 2017. Um, so I've got the other split of um, the graphic as well. So uh, what have I got? So you've got physical assets and then you've got digital assets. Um, and so the, uh, so I'm, I'm, so obviously we know what the physical assets are, um, but then we're getting used to these digital assets um, that are intangible. Um, so we're, we're sort of trying to wrap our head around how we can have ownership over something that is non-fungible in a digital world, as, whereas in the physical world, we're, we're a lot more used to it. Um, and so, and obviously your audience will be familiar with what a token is. So I won't go into explaining what that is, but it's, it's usually at the moment Ethereum and it's a token on the Ethereum blockchain. And it's usually, but not limited to an ERC-20 token, if for people who are familiar, um, ERC-721 token, as opposed to ERC-20 tokens that are um, other interchangeable coins on the Ethereum blockchain. So this is, this is basically something that they can, they can just hold in their wallet, right? Correct, yeah. So just like you can, uh, any compatible Ethereum um, ERC-20 token, you can swap for an NFT token and you hold it in your wallet just the same as any other um, Ethereum token. So what would you say the, the value of that is? So, so is the idea, uh, so I'm looking at, to start off with say like the physical non-fungible tokens, um, for instance, a house, is the idea that you could prove ownership of property uh, on the blockchain using you know you using one of these tokens is that the general idea yeah yeah so um yeah of course we're used to it you know something physical it's easy to sort of say i own this and this is mine uh, but the equivalent the nft is is literally the digital equivalent of ownership so it's a it's like a digital certificate of authenticity that you own something so the token is um held on the blockchain and the token contains meta tags that link to a digital file and that digital file can be can be anything um, but you know my passion is is crypto art uh, but 
It can be a game asset. It can be um, any type of digital file you can imagine that often uh, at the moment cr with crypto art, you are saving it to a, um, a decentralized uh, server to, to, hold it, to hold it. So it's, you know, a bit more permanent, um, but it's not, um, it's not always on chain, but the token itself is of course always on chain. And that is what is holding the value, what that is the proof that the token is owned by you and that the tags associated with it is the digital file which is associated with you and that how is how it proves ownership of what you have. So, um, and we've never had that before, you know, the, in the whole of digital time that it has existed since the internet started, uh, we've sort of taken it for granted that digital files are infinitely copyable and, you know, easily commoditized. You can copy, paste, download, send email and one digital file or a JPEG or whatever is indistinguishable from another. And so there is no sort of inherent ownership value at all in any of that stuff um, until now. So that's why this is a real game changer because with the blockchain and with tying this into digital files, there is really a real way now to prove ownership of uh, a digital asset that you, that you own. So, so this is a question I'm sure a lot of people will have, and I think it's kind of a natural question that might come up would be things like, things like digital art. Um, you know, as you said, it, it can be infinitely copyable, right? If there, if there's something online, you can copy it a million times. If I guess if, if everyone can theoretically copy it and have their own version of it, can you explain why having a token to prove ownership of something, why that has, you know, why people should find something like that uh, valuable, I guess? Sure. Um, so, like we mentioned, you know, we're all used to living in the physical world, but more and more nowadays, many of us live online, like we're, we're living in a digital space, like I'm online talking to you, I've not met you physically. Mm -hmm. um, and often, sort of 80% of my day is spent in front of a computer, uh, the social media aspect of it, you, you connect with people and network with them that way. So more and more of our life is digital. So it just makes sense that the, you know, the continuation of that is that people desire and want to own things that are digital and live in the digital space. Um, sort of games and other things, they've, they've commoditized it, they've kept it all gated and in-house. So, you know, if you're playing Fortnite or some other game, uh, you might buy a skin, a digital skin or a weapon or something. You can't sell that to somebody outside of the game. Like there's just, it just seems weird that like in the future, I think it will seem weird that you can, um, you used to only be able to buy something and it's worthless outside of that small silo that you're, you're in digitally. So with NFTs, that opens it right up. So imagine like my daughter plays Roblox all the time and she's always trying to show me the new decoration of her house that she's made and look at the art on the wall and look at the furniture I've put here and look at my outfit. Uh, you know, imagine if, all those things that she's designing in there that she could literally sell to someone else on a marketplace. And then it opens up a whole new economy of for creators that they can, you know, buy and sell things that they've made online to other people online and it be provably owned by them. Could you, so I'm, I'm sure a lot of my viewers, um, probably are unaware of, of this world of cryptocurrency that even exists. Uh, it, it's a completely different sector than, than most people, I think, that follow my channel are used to. However, I do know there is some interest in it because I have mentioned it a few times. Could you, could you kind of like show us some of the world that you live in uh, and, and, and kind of talk about who's using this stuff, right? Who, who out there is already using it? and and maybe we can get a better idea of, of, you know, kind of the momentum that's driving this this movement. Sure, uh, I'll take you through a couple of um, platforms which I use. Uh, so there's one called Super Rare, okay. 
and I'll just scroll through here. So this is an example of some of the, the current things on Super Rare. This is a curated platform, so it's not open to everyone. They, you've got to give them a submission. They want to make sure that the quality of the art on the site is of a you know, certain height. Um, this is some data around their market, you know, top collectors, top artists, large, collection, large, large collections in total. You can see some of the top artists there are making some decent recent sales there. Mm-hmm. Um, and who are they? Who are they selling it to? Are they are they generally selling it to people who are very much into art, or are they are they selling it to investors who are hoping to, you know, buy it with the idea that they're going to sell it later on down the line? Who would you say like the target audience is for for this type of of, of marketplace? Yeah, so I, I think it's both at the moment. It's uh, because it's still a fairly new space. It's still much evolving, and people are trying to find the best way forward. And they're, they're trying to find what, uh, from the creator side, what is um, makes sense and what uh, is going to be worthwhile to create and sell. And then from the collector side, they're trying to figure out, you know, what is going to have value in the future. Or why am I collecting? What am I collecting? So everyone's still asking themselves those same questions but i can i can tell you from my personal point of view like who is collecting my artwork um and i can tell you from examples and stories i can show you soon um but some of the collectors that have collected my work are top marketing gurus uh some vc capital people uh someone who works for binance has bought my work uh so it it currently tends to be crypto native people, people who are familiar with, you know, a wallet, Ethereum wallets, uh, the value of crypto, they're, they're not uh, scared by transferring crypto. So they've done that before. So there's a crypto native person, but someone who has maybe also done quite well out of crypto over the years, and they've got, you know, plenty to spend in crypto, uh, and they're not you know, opposed to speculating on the value of something. And especially, you know, quite often uh, tech innovations lead the way in, uh, you know, innovation. But then quite quickly after often comes the artist. The, and, and when the artist and the technology come together, that's quite often where the rubber hits the road, where it really is a catalyst for the mainstream to come on board because a lot of the time the creativity the thinking the um the connection to emotion and culture from the artists that they bring into a space is what really starts to connect everyone else to make something go mainstream so i think everyone who is an early adopter of this stuff uh, sort of understands that and they're trying to foster the space and, and the, the collectors are doing that as well, and the, the creators, they're trying to um, you know, come on board, uh, spread the message that this is real. This is a real uh, movement, and it's real digital ownership. And you know, I've, I came on as a creator, but I've quite quickly become a collector myself. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm looking, and I'm using my knowledge of crypto and trading and, and, and whatever to, to get ahead as a collector. But as a creator, I'm also, you know, bringing something to the table. Uh, so this is an example of my profile on Super Rare. I haven't made many things, only six, but I've, I've pretty much sold out. Uh, the lo- only one left over, I think. Um, another example is uh, Maker's Place. Uh, this is similar to Super Rare. You can get a, a variety of different um, NFTs, crypto art, and it could be anything. It could be a video, it could be a GIF, it could be a still image. Uh, the difference with Maker's Place is they allow credit cards. So you're not restricted to being a crypto native. So this, I, I've used this a few times. Um, so I'm here, I'm sold out on all of these, but someone could use a credit card to buy this. So it's good if I'm trying to target uh, someone who isn't au fait with sort of all crypto stuff. Um, so you would say, and, I mean, like, you know, one of the common discussions in crypto in general is okay well you know what is the use case and and that's one one of those things that everyone wants to know re- regarding every different project it seems like nfts are are among the 
you know, some of the best use cases that blockchain has, the idea that you can prove ownership of things on the blockchain and all things can trace back to that. And I think it's cool too because it, it, it you know, it can bring on a community of people that may have otherwise never even cared about cryptocurrency. Uh, do you see that? Like, do you see people coming into into this into the crypto scene that otherwise had no connections to it, but because of this application, this specific utility, they've now entered into the crypto movement? Or do you? Is it only people, uh, or is it you know a majority of people that were already in crypto? Uh, yeah. Look, this is what is what I was saying before, where it's sort of where the crossover happens. So, um, when in the past, I've talked to my friends and family about crypto, and it's just been about you know uh, this weird uh, speculative type of industry or whatever that they have had no interest. But now, when I have told them about crypto art or NFTs, and I show them something and say the the technology is used to prove ownership, like a digital signature or a you know of this artwork. And this is the artwork that you could own and prove that this one of one is yours. That's when they're like, oh, that is a great use of it. That, that, uh, right. I, I can see potential now in that or I want that. Whereas before they, they go, oh, why would I want that coin that does nothing for me? So this is, you know, it's literally, uh, we've had lots of use cases in the past, um, but this is one that's really starting to take off um, mm -hmm. because I think uh, being a digital uh, creative myself, uh, I've seen a lot of people, a lot, a lot of really popular digital creators on Instagram have a huge following and have um, massive exposure, but never really a way to prove ownership or sell their digital artworks apart from maybe printing some off and sending it to their fans, uh, which never really went down well, especially if you're an animator or, you know, there's, there's video involved. How do you really, you know, it's, it's until now. So a lot of those Instagram artists are coming over and they're exchanging their exposure and likes for crypto. And it's like they're, they're, they're being converted and they're getting into crypto through the art side. And then like what happened to me, I become a collector as well because there's plenty of things that, you know, I relate to and I want in my collection and, and I buy just for the sake, you know, the emotional sake or the the desire or, or whatever. And it, that's, I think, goes the same for anyone who's a collector of anything. You know, there's so many people that collect all different kinds of things. Right. But it's something you might like is um, the data side of things yeah. because everything's on chain. You can track everything. So just like uh, CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap, there's a top artist ranking list where they've, they track you know, the average sale, the highest sale, how many artworks are sold, and the total exchange revenue sort of value of each artist. I mean, you can see just from this, that, I mean, there's some, there is some serious money moving through the space, despite the fact of it being a you know, somewhat relatively recent movement. I mean, you have some of the top artists here pulling in millions of dollars. Um, I mean, and the average sale, it looks like the, the top, you know, one of the, the top guy there has an average sale of over of over $8,000. So there's, and I mean, the highest sale, uh, it looks like it's 777000 So there's definitely, there's definitely interest in this space. Um, do you see, do you see this space continuing to grow uh, throughout, you know, as the market cycle continues? Uh, yeah, I can't see how it won't. Like, uh um, so many different people are getting into it um, and it's just really the beginning for, for me. So let me show you. Um, so you get the, 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 the crypto native crowd now, there's this Instagram crowd. For instance, this one last year, Paris Hilton mm -hmm. sold a, a sketch of hers. So just on a, um, an iPad, she sketched her kitty her cat, and because it's Paris Hilton, of course, sold for 40 ETH at the time. Right. Um, and just, uh, I think recently, just the other day, there's a site called Rarible, which is not a curated site. It's, it's open to anyone. So anyone can join, uh, get an account, as long as you have a wallet. Uh, Mark Cuban. Yeah. 
he he joined up just the other day. So this is his profile page here. He's got nothing on sale because he's sold out. And this was his first NFT that he uh, he put up yesterday. Whether you're into that sort of thing or not, I don't know. But, so how, much, how much did um, he sell? Or how many how many of these did he sell? And how much did he sell them for? So I think um, he put up nine. So it says up the corner here. I don't know if we're our heads in the way or not, but uh, one of nine. And because it's all on chain, you can see all the information and the history. So you can see the owner here is zero X underscore B one. And then if I go to the history on the right hand side, I can see the total history and I can see this person bought uh, this copy here for 30 ETH. I think it re originally went on sale for 0 0.0 something ETH, 0 0.02 ETH it originally sold for one day ago and quickly made its rise and people are spending, you know, flipping and spending 5 ETH and, and this guy ended up buying it, this one for 30 ETH and then not, not only did he buy this one, he bought another one for 35 ETH and then immediately burned it. Wow. <laughs> so I don't know what, what reason, but he just, you know, maybe he wanted to increase the value of what he had by, you know, making it more scarce or maybe he's just doing it for meme value. So, so you, you have the you ability, can. so you have the ability like, you know, like an ERC-20 basically to... Uh, exactly. You can okay. burn it. It's a, it's a token just like any other token. I mean, this is pretty, pretty impressive that it's, you know, this this part of, of the crypto world is capturing the attention of people like Mark Cuban. Um, I, I think that, and, and Paris, you know, and, and Paris Hilton, I mean, this is pretty, pretty impressive that these people that probably otherwise would not be as interested in crypto, though I think Mark is, is uh, somewhat intrigued by it, that, you know, they're, they're actually jumping on board with, with the idea of NFT. So obviously there's something there, right? The, there's something behind this idea that that people that people see, and I mean, you know, Mark was one of the other guy earlier guys um, uh, in the internet, you know, and he he had a couple of really good exits uh, back in the day, early days of the internet. So it's really interesting to see these people, you know, in in this movement um, uh, of NFTs, and I think it's amazing how, despite the fact that it seems to be growing so quickly. In my world, honestly, I just I, you know you don't really hear a whole lot about it. But once you once you know where to look, you can see how big it is. But you know until you get that direction, I, there's probably a lot of people that have no idea that this world even exists or this you know this sector of crypto is even there. Yeah, I, I beat myself up sometimes because I was early into Bitcoin, but I was leaning a little bit more maxi. I was a bit of a maximalist. And I just discounted Ethereum uh, from way early on and I, I missed the whole train of it. And then I was a bit dirty because I missed it. And I was like, oh, I'm still, I'll still be a maxi. Uh, and then I changed. I, 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 I had a, a good look at it. I saw this hashtag crypto art coming up. I was into crypto a long time ago. I've been an artist for my whole career. And I was like, this is me. This is for me totally. And I, I got it from the start. So now that I'm diving in and I'm, I'm been somewhat successful in the space myself. Um, I'm trying to spread the message to other people. And, and my, my, my YouTube channel has been about uh, helping and tutorials for creators, but it's quickly been garnering a, a following for crypto art and, and lessons. Um, so this is this people guy who was the number one ranking before. Uh, his, his uh, sellout exhibition wasn't that too, too long ago. But um, an example of uh, me being both a collector now uh, as well as a creator, when he dropped this announcement, so this was a open edition, so there was no limit on how many they were going to create. Uh, it sold for, was it $969? Mm -hmm. And so I was, and it was open for five minutes. So they, they created a, a fair bit of hype around this and call it an art drop and and this is a well-known artist. So people, if I can, I don't know if I can get the tab up. Oh, no. Um, Beeple has been making digital art for 13 years straight, every single day. I don't know if I can get this. Dedication. <laughs> yeah. 
So this is his site, 5,022 days consecutive of making um, something creative and posting it to up online somewhere. So he's been around the traps for a while. He's well known in, in the digital art world uh, and obviously in um, people who are in crypto also, I guess, know about him because I was on my phone uh, and in the passenger seat of our car at the right time and I'm like, okay, I'm going to get something of his. And as an experiment, I was like, I'm going to buy one to hold and one to sell. So I bought this bull run here. Uh, it, it, in the end, minted 271 editions. So, this 200, one, 200. so 271 people bought it in those five minutes. Correct. Okay. Yeah. For just under $1,000. So that's over a quarter of a million dollars right there. For yeah, that I mean, one piece. There's definitely a lot of interest in, in the space if, if five minutes can garnish that amount of attention. Obviously, this is coming from an artist who has a, a pretty large following. But I mean, again, this is one more way that people who were not otherwise in crypto are, are probably being introduced to it just through, you know, the, the people that they follow and, and want to collect their artwork and say that they own some of that artwork and then they can prove that they own some of that artwork on the blockchain. So you mentioned you bought one to one to hold. So what did you do with the other one? Oh, so the day after, um, so there was, you know, you imagine the people who miss out on that sale and there's still more people who, who want to buy it. So the, the demand is still there. So I sold this one the day after, or maybe two days after for three times what I bought it for, for over a bit over $3,000 uh, I sold it for. Um, and then that gave me, you know, some more dry powder to buy more crypto art. So where and do you? So, I, so so you buy it. So you bought it on 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 this website, Nifty Gateway. Is that right? Where do you yeah. where do you sell it? Like, how do you if if someone wanted to buy crypto art and they you know they they wanted to go down into the rabbit hole of NFTs and whether it was crypto art or you know some other application of NFTs. If you if you buy it with the idea that you're looking at it as like an investment, uh, like maybe buying like a, a physical piece of artwork or something, where do you go to sell it? So all of these, um, I can even go there right now. All of these platforms have a marketplace usually where you can either uh, on the primary market is where they usually sell and they have an auction or they have limited uh, set number of uh, pieces for a certain price, but there's also a marketplace for secondary sales. So all these are people who already own it, who are trying to sell this particular thing and they put their price on it and then you can go along, you can check it out and you can buy it. So you just, so you just a, basically posted the, the one of the copies that you bought, you posted it here. Uh, yeah, that's correct. I, I put a, um, a price on it that I was willing to part with it for. Uh, someone accepted that price and then the tokens transferred. So the platform makes a, when on primary sales, they make a commission like 15%. That's how they make their money. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they facilitate this happening. So each platform, the, the Super Rare, Maker's Place, Nifty Gateway, Rarible, they facilitate their own marketplace for secondary sales. Uh, and it's pretty seamless. They've, they, the, the reason why it's sort of going so well is because they, they've had time during the bear market to build out these really nice platforms that work quite well. Mm -hmm. And then the token just swaps and then it's no longer in my wallet, it's in the other person's wallet. And then I have the Ethereum or whatever, or the cash or whatever the marketplace deals in, uh, in, in my wallet. And I tell you, it, if you're... Uh, someone who collects things or has an emotional attachment or sentimental or whatever, you feel that sale after you make it. So like, so here's my, and everything's tracked on the blockchain. So you can, everything's, you know, the, the contract addresses, the token IDs, you can see the sale amount here and I received this and it shows me the fee, fee breakdown. So I sold it for over $3,000. And then also built into the contract, which is also great uh, because we live in a digital land, is a 10% commission kickback to the original creator. Oh, so wow. on secondary sales, they can infinitely earn income on the artwork that they made when, whenever someone is selling in the future. So that even that is something that is another 
use case on top that which is great for collectors. So it's certainly, I mean, it's certainly a great a great opportunity for you know creators that that especially I mean what we're looking at here, like say digital art, for them to go to these platforms and and you know auction off or sell some of their artwork and then they get the proceeds of that plus potentially secondary sales in the future. So I mean this you know this is obviously a great I mean it's one of the best applications of, of cryptocurrency. Um, I, I think it's really a really interesting look into into this world. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, and so yeah like I've not got into this to sort of flip uh, creators work or to to become a trader in uh, an art dealer or, or anything like that but because it's so easy and and possible now and I'm experimenting it I've I've been doing quite well as a collector I've only sold three on this site uh, but yeah for instance this one here I bought for six hundred and fifty dollars and the next day I flipped it for seven thousand five hundred the next day yeah. it's funny because yeah the, the next day in crypto people talk about about you know a 10x a lot right you know like oh what's the next thing to 10x and and the reason why I think it's important to introduce NFTs is because of, of things like this. I mean, the market is really expanding itself. I mean, along with the as crypto is is moving, it seems like the you know non fungible tokens are are continuing to grow. What do you see? Like you know, are there areas of NFTs that you think are not being? Um, I mean, obviously, digital art is one. And you mentioned some earlier, you know, are there some other big ones besides digital art that are, are really taking off? Or would you say that digital art is kind of in the, you know, in the driver's seat right now? Uh, right now, it's it's got a lot of attention because of huge sales that have happened. And uh, that will always draw, you know, media attention and, and, and the crowd to it and also the creators. But it's really good because there's such a variety of different people with different ideas and creative angles and you'll find something in your niche within crypto art that you're into even if you're not into art you, you'll find maybe there's a uh, a generative data analysis type of artist or that something you'll relate to uh, on, a, on a different level than just wanting to trade something you might find something you want to hold on to so there's that sentimental emotional attachment to art which is different, but there's a lot of other things that um, I think will take off in the future. Something that hasn't really taken off too much is game assets. Uh, there's a, there's a, lots of examples of um, NFT uh, tradable game assets and people building games companies on top of uh, the blockchain, uh, different blockchains even, not always just Ethereum. Uh, that have done quite well. So game assets is one. Virtual land is another one. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe as we get sort of more digital events or um, events linked, you can, you know, it's ticketing type of things or uh, entrance passes as NFTs uh, and then collectibles as well. Uh, digital collectibles for your, you know, uh, one that's been taking off quite recently is NBA Top Shots. Uh, a lot of people are into NBA, so you want to own, they're called Moments. It's like a short video snippet, the equivalent of a digital trading card. And they've been doing quite well. Packs are just impossible to get. And people have been opening packs and selling them for tens of thousands of dollars as well. This is really um, interesting. I mean, it, it seems like it seems like this movement or this, you know, this sector is only gonna grow, uh, especially as, as crypto grows. Um, and you know, especially too, as as people who are holding, you know, coins like Ethereum and other coins that have been expanding in value as well, uh, this is probably going to also help encourage encourage these types of movements. What um are there you know are there any other uh, other specific things you'd like to show the audience about about NFTs and, and digital artwork? Um, yeah, there's probably a couple of others, but uh, but just in general, because I'm a crypto guy. I do follow the markets as well. So I made, this is my first um, collection called Art Drop on Nifty Gateway that I made last year. And so these are some of my creations, but uh, when I made my sales, Ethereum was at like $350. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I don't 
cash out. You know, I keep it all in crypto and I, you know, when I buy things, I'm, I'm buying it with my ETH as well. Um, so, you know, when I sold uh, these images or whatever, they're worth three times more now uh, in my wallet than they were when I first made them. And the people that have collected my work, so the one thing I, I would like to also mention about NFTs that are different to just cryptocurrency is that it's much more illiquid. So there's right. lots of activity happening. But of course, if, for example, this one, there's only 10 existing in the world. Uh, if you get demand for it, then of course the price can get really heated up really quickly because there's only 10 right. only, and maybe one person is selling. So people who have resold my work, it hasn't sold for less than 100% what they bought it for, you know, I mean, on top, like two times, two X right. at least three, four times sometimes. So no one has made a loss on my artwork. Some people who are just getting into flipping, make a small loss, but yeah, it's, it's more illiquid. Right. Um, so that's, that's a drawback. You, you can't just go and buy a million of, you know, one of these NFTs, even if you want to, because there might not be that many made. Well, also too, I mean, like, yeah, like if you, yeah, like you could buy one and you might think the valuation of it will go up. You might think that people will want to pay more for it, but there's always that risk that they don't. Um, yeah. Especially yeah, if you're just speculating and you right. don't know why you're buying it, then the risk is always there for sure. I've got a knowledge of art and a background and I know the artists and I know why they're going to be worth more. I understand why something is undervalued. And so I, I can easily say, yes, I'm going to spend a thousand on that. That's going to be worth you know, X amount in the future. I know that bull run that I bought off um, uh, Beeple, if I can get it back here. It's funny because yeah. there, there's, so, some, some, there's some similarities between like, you know, picking out like altcoins and whatnot, you know, like, oh, picking, for sure. out, like picking out the for good sure. ones and, you know, separating, you know, or finding, figuring out which ones are going to rise to be the cream of the crop, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And so when I bought this, I was, you know, speculating. I like the artist. I wanted the work, but it's a speculation. And I wasn't to know that the next day, because he had a list of auction one of one items that coming up. I wasn't to know that the next day his one of ones would start selling for 75,000, 70, 90,000, 100,000, 100,000, 100, like every single one was over a hundred thousand dollars from that point onwards. Right. And then when the last one sold for 777000 you know, that's when I knew, you know, what I just bought the day before was going to skyrocket in value in the short term. But even in the long term, it's, it's a moment in time that will be sort of historic now. And it's the record sale for quite a while. So it's like a history making sale. And who wouldn't want to be part of that? Uh, like, you know, I, I definitely want to be part of that history for crypto and art and have something in my collection to say I was there, this is what I have, this is what I own and, and, and know that, you know, I'm not selling it, but maybe in the future it's my holiday house that, you know, I sell, I sell, right. I sell it for and I can, you know, get a, a car or something, you know. Well, one of the things um, we talk about a lot in crypto, you know, as you're aware, is trying to identify bubbles and, and you know, like everyone would like to time the top do you feel like there could be elements of manic bubbles that exist within this world too? Like for instance, someone willing to pay $777,000 for a piece of, of, of this digital art. Do you feel like in the same way that in cryptocurrency in general, we can see assets you know balloon up in value and then come back down to earth? but then eventually they kind of go back up as long as the market keeps maturing and growing. Do you see elements yeah. of that potentially with, with digital art and NFTs? Yeah, for sure. For, for sure. Like in any free market, that's going to happen. Uh, and because it's, this is a, linked to crypto market, it's, it's, it will happen eventually. I don't think we're there yet. I think we're still in sort of the infancy and the, the building and the growing phase. Um, but it will definitely come sooner or later. Do you think it's, so, do you think it's tied to, say, the, a Bitcoin bull market in general? Like if, if Bitcoin were in a bear market right now, would you anticipate pieces of art not selling for quite as much? Uh, 
Or would you say there's not enough it's, data to really to really know for sure? Yeah, there's, there's not a yeah. I would say that to to know for sure. But um, I don't think uh, these artworks uh, they people are valuing like de- they, I don't think they these artworks devalue when the cryptocurrency devalues. If you know what I'm saying, because they're its own entity, it's its, its own token, but its value is not just in the the fungibility and the tradability of the the currency. So, and because that, like I said, these are pretty illiquid, you're looking for collectors. You're looking for someone who values this piece in the future. Mm -hmm. So it could be worth more. So that's why I think a lot of these collectors who have plenty of Ethereum on hand are speculating that, that it's going to be worth a hundred thousand dollars to buy that piece of artwork because in the future they'll be able to sell it to a gallery who want a historic piece of that and it will be worth millions. Like, for instance, in the art world, graffiti used to be a disgusting type of thing that people did and then it turned into sort of murals and graffiti art and then became established. And then uh, Banksy is now one of the most well-known in the art world. And I literally, when I was living in London, I could have bought one of his canvases, his pieces for $50 now his stuff regularly sells for tens of millions of dollars. Wow. Uh, and so and that was from a, an industry which was, you know, thought of as not that cool, like graffiti, graffiti art is just vandalism, to it being a historic moment in our past that people want to have a part of and a piece of, and it, it has changed our world significantly. And people who are collectors or have a, you know, a, a connection to that. They want a piece of that. And it's, it's like any sort of art movement that, that's happened. I think this is like one of those art movements. So for instance, uh, even the Renaissance, you think of Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, um, they're, when they developed uh, the Mona Lisa or the sculpture of David or whatever, uh, the, they were developing their techniques with technology. And some of the technology or techniques that they were developing was a, um, uh, was perspective. And we take it for granted now, but like perspective lines, like lines drawn on an angle that go to a vanishing point with a horizon line uh, to create the illusion of depth. That's a, it's a trope, it's an easy thing that I learned in like year one of art school. But that was something that didn't exist before. The, the idea of realism in art didn't exist before. It was really all stylized. It was related to religion, uh, sort of like that was what the art world was. And then when these guys came along and started doing s- things that looked real and they were using techniques to get realism happening, that, that changed the world and, people, and people, people perceived the world differently because of what the movement was. was. It wasn't just them. It was lots of art, artists in that time. And I think the same thing is happening uh, with crypto art. It's, it's the artists are coming over. We're finding a way to merge this technology and where previously with the, the combination of social media and the internet and crypto and, and digital art, there's something happening, which uh, I think maybe we'll hear about this as the crypto art movement in 50 years time. Mm-hmm. And these speculators or collectors or whatever are, are banking that this is, you know, it may be even bigger than their Ethereum uh, speculation that they made a dollar or whatever that, right. you know, that they've got plenty of now. So they're, they're, they're willing to back up their ideas and, and their use cases and their speculation with making purchases at the moment. So that's, you know, why the big collectors are doing what they're doing. So if, you know, there's going to be a lot of viewers watching that probably are, are intrigued by this, but they don't know where to start, right? Like they, where would you, to, to say someone who's completely new to this idea, like they've never even heard of NFTs before, or maybe they've heard them, but they don't really know anything about them. If someone wanted to just start learning about it, not necessarily go buy anything or anything like that, but just learn about it. Where would, I mean, obviously your YouTube channel would be a good spot. Like, could you pull that up for a second? Um, so yeah, yeah sure. before, before you answer that question, I would recommend everyone who's watching, if you guys want to learn more about NFTs, go check out Rhett's YouTube channel. 
And, and, and Rat is actually, you know, he's got a special place in the cryptoverse already. We, we held a competition, as I mentioned earlier, we held a competition a while back to design the Into the Cryptoverse logo. And, and Rhett actually designed the, the winning logo. And so when I was wanting to talk about NFTs, I thought, you know, I, I would reach out to Rhett. And it turns out he has a YouTube channel where he talks a lot about this sector. So if you guys are, are interested in, a, in NFTs, I would, I would strongly recommend you go over to Rhett's YouTube channel. We'll, we'll link his YouTube channel in the description below. And Rhett, if you, if you could, you know, if someone were to go to your channel, like what would be a good video or, you know, what would be some good content to start with to just really start learning about, about this space? Yeah, uh, this one I had at the start is a good one. Uh, what is an NFT? Okay, so we'll link that one we'll too. Yeah, so that's a really good one for total beginners. Uh, yeah, and I've, then I list, traditionally my channel has been for artists and I teach them, I have tutorials on how to do their art better and, and that, but um, there's this one here, Crypto Art Income for Creatives. Mm -hmm. So I'm teaching uh, creatives the different platforms and, and how it all works. So that's a good one for creatives. So it could be, uh, it could be really useful for, for people who watch my channel that are artists and want to dive into the space themselves, like in, in terms of yeah. creating their own art and how do they then launch that onto the blockchain? Yeah, yeah, I talk about all the different platforms, uh, what they require, uh, you know, there's, some open platforms like OpenSea or Rarible, which are totally open. There's no gatekeepers, but then there's curated places like Super Rare and Maker's Place where uh, they want to um, curate who enters and sells on their, on their platform. Uh, and then, yeah, there's for, for collectors or interesting stories, there's um, this one here, this drawing sold for what? That's uh, uh, a recent sale by, um, uh, what's his name? Justin Roiland. Uh, he just he literally did like 10 second sketches and I think he took a photo with his iPhone uh, of his sketches and then they sold for over $100,000, some of them. Um, it was ridiculous. But he's the creator of Rick and Morty. So if you're a fan of Rick and Morty, right. just it's just like having, you know, a, an original Walt Disney sketch from someone you know, back in from him back in the day if you're a disney fan uh, you know you can see how that would be worth a lot nowadays right uh so so th they're speculating that this is going to be worth a lot in the future as well uh so yeah there's some big money being spent on um some particular artists and particular pieces but for beginners there's definitely like rareable is a trash and treasure or um car, I don't, car boot sale i've seen over here um you can find lots of trash, uh, and and it's not worth buying. But you, there is lots of treasure you can find for really cheap prices if you right. uh, know what you want or know what you're looking for. Just like just like the altcoin market. <laughs> exactly. You know, exactly. There are yeah. a lot of similarities. I'm I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of it. You know, that you get flooded with a lot of people putting up, you know, things that aren't aren't really worth much. But then there's some that. Are those hidden gems that they talk about right uh, the ones that i'll yeah. uh, just yeah I, I think this is a really interesting uh, topic and it's something that i wanted you know i want to dive more into in uh in 2021 especially as 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 the sector grows i'm sure we'll have you on the channel again in the future uh to discuss the you know how this how this movement is is growing especially as as the entire cryptocurrency asset asset class continues to expand yeah, totally. It's an interesting space. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm all about it. I'm all in for <laughs> for this year in uh, NFTs and crypto art. And there, there's there's even more than just what we've talked about the, of other uh, businesses and currencies building on this space. And it's it gets a rabbit hole that I haven't stopped going down quite yet. And there's even more. So I'm sure once you once you look into it, you'll find there's. A, I'm not shilling any coins. I'm not saying any coins, but there's. Um, uh, uh, tokens that are associated like index funds and there's mm -hmm. social currencies built on this that are backed by NFTs and there's uh, you know, plenty of, of things which are using the asset like the NFT, the crypto art or the digital assets as uh, like, like value um, 
storers as well as uh, you know you traditional cryptocurrency. So there's a whole world out there to explore with this. Yeah, and I'm I'm excited to explore it and, and talk about it on the channel. Uh, you know, as we as I continue to dive into into this part of of the cryptoverse, so to speak. Um, but anyways, uh, you know, it's great to have you on the show. I hope I hope people were able to learn a lot uh, from this discussion. Rhett has, you know, he's he's very much involved in this space. Again, if you guys want more information on NFTs, on my channel, this is the only video that exists so far. But if you go over to Rhett's channel and subscribe, you'll find more. Also, go ahead and subscribe to this channel as well. Give the video a thumbs up. Rhett, it was a pleasure having you on. I'm sure we'll have you on in the future. Uh, with cool. that... With that, we'll wrap it up, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.